Grand Theft Auto has been around for... Um, so, sorry about this. Hello? What? Bowling, I can't... Cousin, you know I can't today. I'm busy going through the timeline of Grand Theft Auto's HD universe. No, not San Andreas and Vice City. They're in the 3D universe, and I already covered that. The HD universe covers GTA 4, Chinatown Wars, GTA 5, and their DLC. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, no, I'll cover GTA Online, too. Look, I'll call you back, okay? Okay. Sorry about that. Let's get started with the man himself, Nico Bellic. Serbia, mid-late 1990s to 2000s. As a soldier during the Yugoslav Wars, Niko sees and does some of the worst things humanity is capable of. He and a group of his fellow soldiers get ambushed and only three of the 15 survive. Him, Florian Kravich, and Darko Brevich. Niko figures one of these two sold them out, so he vows revenge for his fallen friends. After the war, Niko starts working for Ray Bulgarin and his human trafficking ring. While on a smuggling run to Italy, Nico sabotages the ship he's on, steals a bunch of Bulgarin's money, and swims to safety. But Bulgarin has his eyes all over Europe, so Nico figures the only way to be safe is by escaping overseas. While all this is going down, over in America, three ambitious criminals have a plan. 2004, North Yankton. Michael Townley, Trevor Phillips, and Brad have their eyes set on a load of cash held by Bobcat security in North Yankton. They take hostages and successfully steal nearly $200,000 from the vault. They make a break for their getaway car and ride off, but this is Grand Theft Auto. The police are everywhere, even when you don't think they are. The cops chase the robbers, and a bullet strikes the driver, forcing Michael to drive. He loses the cops and then crosses some train tracks. As he does, a train nicks the tail of the car, causing it to spin out and smash into a tree. The trio proceed on foot, but they're intercepted by FIB agent Dave Norton, who shoots Brad. A second shot rings out, Michael falls to the ground and tells Trevor to run. So the last man standing retreats into the snowy fields of North Yankton. Fast forward to Michael's funeral, and Norton walks by the proceeding, cigarette in hand. Then, just beyond the fence, Michael, sporting a beanie and aviators, puts out a cigarette. Very much alive. Dun dun dun! 2008, Liberty City. Enter Nico Bellic. We jump to 2008, and this is a doozy of the year in the GTA canon. We'll be moving pretty freely between Grand Theft Auto 4, The Lost and the Damned, and The Ballad of Gay Tony to tell the whole story as best we can. After stowing away on a ship for seven months, Nico Bellic finally arrives on the East Coast in Liberty City. He meets with his cousin Roman, who talked about his lavish life in Liberty City. Nico quickly learns that Roman owns a struggling cab business and can't make ends meet. Loan sharks are breathing down his neck, so Nico helps him with a few jobs. One job in particular leads to Nico chauffeuring Mallory and Michelle, both of whom would eventually date Roman and Nico respectively. From there, Nico networks in Liberty City, meeting Little Jacob, the head of the Jamaican Mafia. The two become quick friends, but things are way more tense between Nico and Vlad, Roman's Russian loan shark. Nico inevitably executes Vlad for sleeping with Mallory, getting revenge for his cousin. Hey, speaking of revenge, at this point Nico reveals why he's in America to find his old squad mates during the Yugoslav War and get answers and revenge. He's just on a revenge spree. Just a lot of revenge in this story. Soon after revealing this, the Bella cousins are kidnapped by one of Mikhail Faustin's goons. Who's Mikhail Faustin? Just your run-of-the-mill Russian mob boss bent on achieving his own version of the American dream. We've seen them a million times. When the cousins wake up, they meet Faustin and his colleague Dmitry Raskolov. The mobsters coerce Nico into doing some work for them. One of these jobs sends Nico to broker to kill Jason Michaels, a member of the Lost Motorcycle Club, who has been seeing Faustin's daughter. Michaels was small time, but Faustin starts asking Nico to do more dramatic hits, which forces Dmitry to put a hit on Faustin. Nico carries it out and reports back to Dmitry to claim his reward. But in a not so surprising twist, Dmitry betrays Nico, selling him back to both Bulgarin, the man Nico escaped from in Yugoslavia. Thankfully, little Jacob saves Nico and they fight off Bulgarin's men together. After that, Dimitri doubles down and sets fire to Roman's apartment and budding cab business, forcing the cousins to retreat north to Bohan and meet up with Mallory, who knows a few people in the area who can get them some work like local drug dealer Elizabeth Torres. Nico goes on a slew of different jobs, making all kinds of friends along the way, including Dwayne Forge, Playboy X, and Brucey Kibitz. Eventually, in one mission, Nico watches over a huge heroin deal, but things don't go as planned. 
But when do they do in the Grand Theft Auto universe? Tell me that. When do they go according to plan? The botched heroin deal. So let's rewind a bit. While Nico was getting acquainted with the Russian mafia, Johnny Kalevitz was dealing with his own affairs. He's the vice president of the Lost Motorcycle Club, and for a while now, the gang has had some beef with its rival, the Angels of Death. The tipping point came when Billy Gray, the chapter president, heard that one of their boys, Jason Michaels, was killed in Broker, which might sound familiar to us because we know that that's Nico who gunned him down. We know the truth, but Billy spins the story and blames it on the angels instead. At this point, Johnny starts butting heads with Billy, and even though he knows it's a bad idea, he joins the Lost in attacking the angels, stealing some heroin. Johnny meets up with Elizabeth to sell the heroin at a house party, where he also meets Nico. Unfortunately, the buyer turns out to be an undercover cop, and the whole party ends with a firefight. The Lost later tries selling the heroin to the Triads, but that deal doesn't go as according to plan either, leading to another firefight. The Grand Theft Auto universe seems to have a lot of these. Billy ends up getting arrested, making Johnny the de facto chapter president. To keep the gang in the green, he starts doing some odd jobs for other criminals. One of these leads to him and his friend Mal kidnapping Roman. You can imagine, Nico was not happy about this. Luck of the Irish. Well, after the botched heroin deal, Nico moves on to bigger, better things, eventually meeting local criminal Packy McReary. He still pushes drugs to, and Elizabeth calls Nico, claiming the angels ripped her off in a cocaine deal. He meets up with little Jacob to steal the cocaine, and after they retrieve it, they run into Nico's girlfriend, Michelle. Except her name isn't Michelle. Her real name is Karen Daniels, and she's been working undercover for the International Affairs Agency the whole time. She takes the coke from them and offers Nico a deal. If he comes and works for the IAA, he won't go to jail. Don't be mistaken though, Nico's still a criminal at heart. He works with Packy to commit some lucrative crimes, some of which were under the orders of Ray Bocino. He's living his best life until he gets a call from Mallory and learns that Dimitri and the Russians have kidnapped Roman. No one mentions Johnny's involvement, so let's keep that a secret between you and me, okay? Nico saves his cousin while his hatred for Dimitri continues to grow. Sometime afterwards, Nico works with Packy to rob one of the larger banks in Liberty City. They then take hostages in the process, and one of which is our third GTA 4 protagonist. A criminal's best friend. So let's set the stage one more time and talk about Luis Fernando Lopez. We first meet Luis with his men on the ground of a Liberty City bank during Nico's robbery. When he's not fearing for his life, he works as the right-hand man of Anthony Gaytoni Prince, a well-to-do nightclub owner who isn't doing so well anymore. Tony has been losing money, so he works with Luis to make some shady deals. One of these deals is with a character simply known as The Cook. This guy came to Liberty City on the same boat Nico did earlier in the year. See, he stole some diamonds from Bulgarin before going to America and planned to sell them to Tony and Luis. But Bocino sent Johnny to ambush the deal and steal the diamonds before they could make the exchange. Meanwhile, the McReary family hires Nico to kidnap the daughter of Giovanni Ancelotti, the don of the Italian mob, and hold her for ransom. Ancelotti believes Gracie's kidnapping has to do with the diamonds, so he blames Tony and Luis. Bocino actually has the diamonds, so he plans to sell them to the Jewish mob, and he tells Johnny and Nico to oversee the deal. Ancelotti catches wind of this deal and sends Luis to crash it. In the end, Luis walks away with the diamonds, Johnny has all the money, and Nico gets nothing. Black and white, clear as crystal, he gets nothing, he loses. Good day, sir. While all the hubbub with the diamonds is going on, Bocino tells Nico where one of his old squad mates is holed up. He tracks down Florian Kravich, which now goes by Bernie Crane. Bernie claims he didn't betray the squad, so Nico narrows it down to one final suspect, Darko Brevich. With some help from Karen and the IAA, Nico tracks him down and kills him, or spares him, depending on what you, the player, choose. Meanwhile, Johnny turns his attention back to his old friend, Billy. He's been in prison and is gonna rat on the rest of the Lost MC to reclaim his freedom, so Johnny and his gang break into the prison to personally execute Billy. The bikers then torch their base in Liberty City, tying up all the remaining loose ends. Now, back to the diamonds, Ancelotti forces Tony and Luis to trade the diamonds for his daughter's life. Packy and Nico show up to hand Gracie over, but partway through the transaction, Bulgarin and his men arrive. Another firefight breaks out, and one of Bulgarin's men ends up throwing the diamonds into a dump truck as it drives away. The diamonds are completely out of the picture, so the Ancelotti family contacts Luis to have him kill Tony over the lost goods. Instead, his loyalty for Tony shines through, and the two cut ties with the mobsters. Luis also assassinates Bulgarin, shutting him up permanently, and he reunites with Tony, and the two celebrate giving this town the finger. 
Meanwhile, Jimmy Pegorino, another Italian mobster, hires Nico to assassinate Bocino. And now all the pieces are coming together for the end of GTA 4. Deal or no deal? Pegorino asks Nico to conduct one final heroin deal. Nico hesitates, though, because Dmitry Raskolov is involved. And here's where the story branches. If Nico takes the deal, Dmitry will double cross him and try to murder him. Nico survives and vows to get his revenge on the criminal. He attends Roman and Mallory's wedding ceremony, and one of Dmitry's assassins will try to kill him again. Nico survives, but in the scuffle, Roman gets fatally shot. With little Jacob's help, Nico hunts down Dmitry and ends him once and for all. Finally, Nico gets a phone call from Mallory, who reveals she's pregnant. He promises to do his best to be a father figure for the child. If Nico instead decides to skip out on the deal, he'll betray Pecorino's trust. He ambushes Dimitri and murders him. Afterwards, he attends Roman and Mallory's wedding ceremony with Packy's sister Kate as his plus one. She's a genuinely good person, they've been dating for a little while, but just as Nico's ready to put his criminal ways behind him, Pegorino drives by the church, fatally shooting Kate. Nico, along with Jacob and Roman, chase after the crime boss, eventually assassinating him on Happiness Island. This is considered the canon ending, since there's hints of Roman being alive in GTA 5. And if Roman's alive, then that means... Yeah, you can figure it out by process of elimination. 2009, Liberty City. A year after Nico's antics, some trouble with the triads start to flare up in Liberty City. Chinatown Wars follows the story of Huang Li. His father, a triad boss, mysteriously died recently. He intends to deliver Yu Jian, his father's prized sword, to his uncle Wu Kenny Li, so Kenny could hand the sword off to Xin Zhou Ming, Liberty City's current triad boss. Unfortunately, someone steals the sword from Huang the moment he lands on Liberty City. A corrupt police officer named Wade Heston offers Huang a deal, and the two team up to find out who stole Yu Jian, and who murdered Huang's father. At first, Huang investigates both the Angels of Death and the local Korean mob, but neither were seen guilty. He does, however, find out that there's a traitor among the triads who has been leaking information to the police. Huang turns his investigation towards the FIB, hacking into their servers to see who the snitch was. He finds out that the two high-ranking triad officers have talked to the police, one of whom is the son of Sin. Dishonored by his son, Sin resigns, opening the path for Kenny to become the new triad leader. Huang executes the two traitors, but soon after, Heston finds out that the information was fake. Turns out that the real traitor was none other than Uncle Kenny, who also killed Huang's father. Sin confronts Kenny, demanding he return Yu Jian. So Kenny obliges, and he, he gives him the sword back by putting it straight through him. Or kind of slashing him with it? I don't know. Cutscenes on the DS and the PSP aren't the most detailed. Point is, Huang kills his uncle Kenny and avenges his father. As he is lying in a pool of blood, Sin suggests that Huang could lead the Liberty City Triads. But just then, the authorities bust in and arrest him. Heston vouches for Huang, so he does get off scot-free. 2013, Los Santos, GTA Online. Now let's head out west to the land of Vinewood. Los Santos. Meriwether, a private military company, sets up in the area, bringing all sorts of weapons and vehicles. Your GTA Online character lands in the city to meet with Lamar Davis, a close, totally not Facebook, friend. Lamar introduces you to a variety of criminal contacts, and your network includes characters like Simeon Yadarian, Trevor Phillips, Lester Crest, and Martin Madrazo. Your character becomes a criminal mongol, running all sorts of heists for Lester and Trevor while owning more organizations than you can count. You can even start your own biker gang courtesy of Malk, the guy who kidnapped Roman back in Liberty City. Your organization specializes in contraband, narcotics, and all other kinds of seedy businesses. Over the course of your criminal career, you steal and destroy a variety of weapons and intel controlled by Meriwether. You keep in touch with Lester, who plays a major role with the main trio of Grand Theft Auto V. A few years down the line, your character even opens a nightclub with the help of Gay Tony. Look, there's lots to do in GTA Online, and it's always getting updated. I'm sure its story will keep developing beyond this video, so let's move on to the twisting story of GTA V. Michael, Trevor, and Franklin Thanks to the Witness Protection Program, Michael DeSanta, aka Michael Townley, has a not-so-happy life in Los Santos with his wife and two kids. Elsewhere, Franklin Clinton and his friend Lamar Davis get by doing odd jobs, like repossessing cards for Simeon Yadarian. One of the cards ends up being Michael's. But instead of being angry, Michael turns out to like the cut of Franklin's jib. The two develop a mentor-student relationship that culminates in them destroying a house that belongs to Martin Madrazo, a drug cartel leader. Suddenly, Michael owes Madrazo a lot of money, so he slips back into his old criminal ways to get the cash. He then contacts Lester Crest to set up a jewelry store heist to 
to kickstart that, you know? Just the old-fashioned way of kickstarting. Lester forms the team, and he says he considers a Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, as well as a local contact who's too unpredictable. Clear references to Nico Bellic and your GTA Online character. Anyway, even without Nico, because he is the best, the heist is a success. Up north in the desert, we find Trevor and Johnny Klebitz's girlfriend. Since 2004, he figured that Brad went to jail and Michael died. But when he sees the jewelry heist on the news, he recognizes Michael's handiwork. Before heading into the city, he murders Johnny and some other Lost MC members to monopolize the meth production in the area. Trevor meets Michael in Los Santos, but he's furious that his old friend is still alive. Despite their differences, the two end up working together to save Michael's daughter from public embarrassment. Norton, the FIB agent who cut Michael the witness protection deal, knows that Michael committed the heist, and Trevor's presence makes him uncomfortable. He blackmails Michael into doing some dirty work to undermine the International Affairs Agency. Sure enough, Michael eventually gets Franklin and Trevor involved in the same mess. Michael's family moves out of his mansion after seeing he's become a criminal again. Unfortunately, he's in too deep now. FIB agent Steve Haynes ropes the trio into a series of crimes, one of which has Michael crossing paths with Karen Daniels. Along the way, they make contact with Devin Weston, a local billionaire who gives the trio a few more missions revolving around stealing rare cars, which puts Michael, a longtime movie lover, in contact with producer Solomon Richards. Thanks to his new connection, Michael becomes a producer on an upcoming film. Madrazo hires Michael and Trevor to silence someone who can testify against him. After the hit, Trevor reports back to Madrazo, but the crime boss refuses to pay, which pushes Trevor to kidnap his wife Patricia, and promptly fall in love with her. He also steals a bunch of weapons and stuff from Meriwether, the military company, and eventually Michael gets back on Mr. Madrazo's good side by bribing him with a rare Aztec artifact, and Trevor returns Patricia to the crime boss. Michael and Trevor start planning a big heist at the Union Depository, one of the biggest banks in the nation. However, when they travel to North Yankton, Trevor finds out that Brad was buried in place of Michael Townley. He and Michael ultimately try to kill each other, but some triads show up to try to kill Trevor. Trevor gets away, so they kidnap Michael instead. Trevor leaves Michael to die, but Franklin eventually rescues him. Now a free man, Michael reunites his family aggressively so, at the behest of his son. He then hears that Weston plans to shut down Solomon's studio, which would eventually kill the movie Michael helped produce. In the heat of the moment, he saves the movie by stealing the film reel, leaving Weston's assistant dead. After tidying up his personal life, Michael gets back down to business with the FIB. In the midst of their meeting, though, the IAA and Meriwether crash the party. When things start looking hairy for Michael, Trevor comes in to save the day, insisting that if anyone's gonna kill Michael, it'll be him. Now that they've patched things up, they revisit their plans to hit the Union Depository. Meanwhile, Franklin has been dealing with his own problems. He eventually finds out that his best friend Lamar has been set up by Stretch, an old friend who has been double-crossing them. With some help from the always bickering Trevor and Michael, he saves his best friend. Afterwards, Haynes and Norton warn Franklin that they'll call on him to assassinate Trevor because he's liable to reveal that the FIB has been working with criminals. Michael and his son go to his movie's premiere, and while on the red carpet, Weston greets him with an ominous warning about his wife. He immediately ditches the movie to return home, only to find Meriwether soldiers trying to kill his wife and daughter. He saves them and asks them to move out until things blow over. Finally, the Franklin, Michael, and Trevor trio unite to pull off the big Union Depository heist. After they successfully steal more money than they can imagine, Franklin gets a surprise visit from none other than Weston. He warns Franklin to assassinate Michael, claiming that he inevitably betrays everyone. Now Franklin and you have a decision to make. You can kill Trevor, kill Michael, or work with them and Lester to kill all their enemies. If you choose to kill Trevor, Franklin will chase Trevor down and burn him to death. Although Michael still considers Franklin a close friend, taking out his old partner in crime doesn't really sit well with him. If you choose to kill Michael, Franklin will set up a meeting, but Michael catches on to the situation and flees. After a chase, Franklin catches up with him at a power station and the two fight near the top of a tower. Finally, Franklin pushes Michael off the edge, killing him. Franklin inevitably regrets his decision and when Trevor finds out, he says he'll kill Franklin the next time he sees him. Thankfully, the third option is the canon ending. If you choose to work with Lester, they all come up with a plan that lures the FIB and Meriwether into a trap. Once they're all taken care of, the main three split up to deal with each other's enemies. Kind of a little, like, switch around of targets. Trevor kills Haynes, who had wanted to murder Michael. Franklin takes out the leader of the triads, who wanted Trevor dead. And Michael hunts down Stretch, who had been messing with Franklin and Lamar. Finally, Trevor ties up the last loose end by kidnapping Weston and putting him in the trunk of a car. He calls Franklin and Michael, and the three push him off a cliff, killing Weston once and for all. And as the sun sets, the three agree to be friends. Flawed, 
awful, totally uncomfortable, and poorly mismatched friends. Man, I've never felt so many warm fuzzies about watching a man perish in an exploding car before, but hey, Grand Theft Auto teaches you a lot about yourself. I wasn't kidding when we said there was a lot of murder and betrayal and revenge, but that's what makes these stories worth telling. And there's a whole other universe of stories worth telling in the 3D universe. We already covered that one, so be sure to take a look. Also, subscribe to the leaderboard, because from indie to AAA, we love the games you play. I'm your host, Kyle, and thanks for watching.